Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Very Connected podcast. And today we're being joined by my dear friend, Jeannie Boyer. Say hello, Jeannie. Hey, guys. Yes. And I met Jeannie. Jeannie, I know I've connected with you more than once, but I the last time I think we connected was at the bariatric retreat um, yep. this last year. Yeah. And Jeannie is a bariatric dietitian and just full of a wealth of information and information. Um, she's certified in obesity and weight management, and she has been in the industry for the past 20 years and helped thousands of people in the bariatric uh, area, not only patients, but professionals in the area from Northern California to South Carolina. Um, she also is an expert contributor to Barry Nation. So if you're from our Barry Nation, please let us know. Um, Barry Nation is a community of like-minded patients that share about their journey and all kinds of topics related to bariatric surgery. So at that, I'm going to kind of turn the mic over to Jeannie. And Jeannie, I want you to tell us just a little bit more in depth about yourself, because I don't think I touched even just a little bit. So I actually have a couple slides that will do that. So if you want me to just yeah, absolutely. I'm changing my, I'm going to be logging on to Facebook in the same aspect. So okay. I'm going to mute myself for just a second while you're doing that. You Okay. I'll just go ahead and share screen. Is that okay? Absolutely. I'll make sure it's shown. And if anybody else is joining us from um, here on Zoom or on Facebook, let us know where you're from. Let us know a little bit about yourself. It looks like we have a couple people here with us, Teresa and April and Kathy. Hey guys. Thank you so much. Hello. <laughs> All right. Um, so you know what you're here to talk about and what I'm what you're here to listen about, what I'm here to talk about. Um, stress, eating, and weight, and how they are, are a lot more connected than you think, than I thought. Um, so that's what we're gonna talk about. I will tell you more about myself eventually. Um, I love to start big topic talks with some quotes. And these are a little um, out of the ordinary for what I would usually start with, but uh, it was so gut-wrenching. Like my palms are sweaty. Like, oh, you're giving me a headache. And I got butterflies in my stomach. Like these are just some examples of the things that, that you have probably said. Like, I know I talk about the butterfly in my stomach feeling. And I've heard my mom say the headache comment plenty of times. Um, but all of these kinds of statements are really unknowingly pointing us back to that fact that mind is, and body are connected. Like if I am nervous about giving a presentation, it, my stomach feels weird and butterfly like that. That isn't in my head, but my stomach is reacting like because of that connection. So we're going to talk a lot about how emotions are felt physically and impact us physically. Um, here we go. A bit about me. If you don't already know me, um, I am married and I have one kiddo there. Uh, he's eight and we have a wonderful, I call her a lap lab. Um, cause there she is on my lap currently living in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, come visit, but soon because I'm moving soon. Um, and that last picture is kind of just like, it makes me smile. It gives me some good emotions. Um, when I was at ASMBS a couple of years ago, a bunch of the dietitians went to a circus training place and we did trapeze stuff and it was so fun. And so that picture just makes me in a mood of fun. And, um, if I disappear one day, check the circus, cause I might run away with them. Um, let's see. Oh, this is going to make some noise and then I'll hopefully stop. Okay. Um, so you know more about me more professionally and like where I'm coming from. And um, Brenda mentioned, I've been a dietitian for about 20 years, um, in the bariatric space, really all that time. I see patients in the clinic and also in private practice. Um, and I've had the honor of writing, articles or contributions for local newspapers, um, Weight Matters Magazine, Obesity Help, speaking at Bariatric Society, being a, an expert at Bari Nation, and 
um, such fun podcasts, and I'm excited to add Barry Connected to this today. All right. I love interaction. If you have questions as I go along, um, put them in the chat. I might catch them or Brenda might catch them. And I want um, want you to answer some questions I have for you. So first question. When you don't like the number that you see on the scale, um, what are the first thoughts that go through your head or the first actions that you look to take? And while you type your answers, I'll be, I'm going to go grab a tissue. Be right back. Let us know, guys, if you're if you're open enough and vulnerable yeah. enough to type in the chat box. We'd love to hear from you. One thing that pops up in my mind, Jeannie, is sometimes I, I can remember getting up one morning and having the scale not have like it didn't have the number on it that I wanted it to have. <laughs> And it like set the mo the mode for my day. And I thought it reminded me of, oh my God, how often do I do that? How often do I like set the tone in a bad way and let my weight influence my mood that strongly? And it yeah. made me realize it shouldn't, it shouldn't have that strong of an influence, you know? Yeah. Or I see uh first instinct is I need to be more strict, like start restricting. Yeah. Like if I get on the scale and don't like the number, I'm just, I start going backwards of like, oh, well, what have I been doing wrong? Or like, this sucks. Or like, now I bet my clothes don't fit. Or just all these things about what is wrong with me. And like, what like behavior or action that I need to change immediately. Um, see, so yeah, I see restriction, disappointment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, good. Thank you, guys. Lots of shoulds, should haves, should not haves. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Self destructive. Yes. So we're going to kind of put this, like, pin that in the back of your head. We're going to come back to this question. But what I can see is it's a lot of like, okay, let's take action. Let's change behavior. Let's look at what behavior was wrong. And then like feeling bad about yourself. So with that in mind, here's what we're going to, what's coming. We're going to talk about stress, like kind of define it. I'm going to share some stats and like what the, how it might look or feel in your body, like the symptoms. Then we'll get into um, what, is happening in your body when you experience stress, the impact that that has, and then a little bit more about what control you have or things that you can do. And I'm going to share with you one of my favorite tools um, when it comes to stress, when it comes to eating. It's awesome. Um, and the, the all of these things we could dive really deep so and take a lot of time. So it's it's going to be kind of like skimming the surface here, but you'll, you'll get a great big picture of like the mind body connection and how it applies in your life in general and after weight loss surgery. That lap lab is probably going to interrupt us. She's being a pest. Um, okay. So this is like Google Merriam Webster, uh, definition of stress pressure or tension exerted on a material object. How much stress is that two by four going to handle? A state of mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances. And um, give particular emphasis or importance to, like, I really want to stress this point. So we use the, the word there. Very historically, like, prehistoric times. Um, when we think of stress, it was, it was temporary and actual, like the lion is coming. I got to do something like you can see it. It is real. And it's going to, it's going to run by or whatever is going to happen. Um, I think more current and what we experience today 
is chronic. So there's this underlying feeling of stress and pressure and tension. Um, and sometimes it's perceived like there isn't an actual exerted pressure on you, but it's this perception that there could be, or that, that something is happening. So whereas prehistorically, historically, we were, we had stress moments and our body was built to respond to those stress moments. Now we are stressed all, most, most of the time, but our body is still reacting in the way that it did ages ago. Um, I'm just checking the chat. Okay. So I love it when um, a Halloween picture can, can be used years later. So there's that one. So who is actually stressed? Like it's, this is a question that I ask almost every patient in the clinic and every client that I talk to is like, how do you think stress is impacting your life right now? And a lot of times people will say like, oh, I don't know. It was a while ago, but not really now. Or oh, I'm stressed all the time. And these statistics were from um, the American Psychological Association. So the first one is from 2019. More than three quarters of adults reported symptoms of stress, including headaches, tiredness, and sleeping problems. So this was also in 2019. Some things have happened since then. Um, so I imagine that it's probably higher now after um, COVID and everything that's going on around the world. Um, in 2020, nearly half of all U.S. adults said that stress had negatively impacted their behavior. And then back again in 2019, one third of people around the world reported feeling stressed, worried, and angry. So another time to interact on the chat. Does this resonate with you? Um, and if you don't mind, would love if you dropped a number in the chat of like, what is your stress level? Maybe not in this moment, but generally now. One and 10. One being like, it's the best time of my life. And 10 being like super stressed all the time. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to call them out while I see it. A lot of eights. Woo. Seven, six, seven, five, five, eight. Yeah. I mean, we're so far, we're higher than that three quarters um, report. A good five, four, seven, three. All right, Kate, we need some of what you got. She's a three. Awesome. Thank you. Um, okay. So the, also, the American Psychological Association, if you really wanted to dig deep, they have a report um, about every year that really gets down in the details, like um, what people are stressed about and different um, groups of people and how stressors are different between them. So it's it's pretty interesting. All right. So how is it? that this stress we experience in our head connects to our bodies. Um, I love this picture. So the yellow is the vagus nerve. Um, you may have heard about like brain gut connection, um, the vagal break, the vagus nerve. Um, you can see it's pretty much connected all the way through like lungs, liver, gut, heart, um, gallbladder, pancreas, large intestine, small intestines, like all these things. So it is like a super highway so that our body can respond, lots of other reasons, but in today's talk, so that our body can respond to danger, like so that it can do what it needs to do to survive. I often use the lion example and I'm trying to think of something different. So bear with this one. So let's imagine you're on this beautiful hike in Montana and this moose starts barreling at you. Like, you're going to need to run. And so that sympathetic nervous system, fight, flight, freeze is built to help you do that. Um, so you it's going to do what it needs to do to help you freeze because you don't know what to do, run away, um, or get ready to fight. 
the parasympathetic nervous system, I don't think we talk about this much, but a good kind of terminology for it is rest and digest. So when that nervous system is in, in control, um, the digestive system is working great, doing what it needs to do. The immune system is working at its best and reproductive systems work. So if we go back to that moose, if I'm running away from a moose, I'm not thinking about making any babies. Um, and I'm not thinking about what I want for dinner um, or like fighting off the common cold. My body is not focused on any of that. It is focused on save my life before the moose tramples me. And so we are in a culture now of this constant perceived stressors. So we're that sympathetic nervous system's running on high speed a lot. We've got like social media, all the deep unconscious, I think, stress that comes from that with comparison and shoulds and shouldn'ts. And do I listen to this person? Do I listen to that person? Um, world news, local news, there's worry about family, whether it's your parents, your children, your siblings, your own unit, work demands. If you're worried about weight, regain, not enough, too much relationships, to-do lists, like it's not a moose, but there's a lot of stuff on us all the time. Um, so we know this nerve, this vagus nerve is happening working and these two different nervous systems that we've got i didn't touch on the enteric system it's um that's, that could be a whole nother presentation but there's a lot of science about how things that go on in our gut and our large intestines are like a second brain and actually impact our emotions as well so more cool stuff about nutrition there so if we go a little further, so from nerves, we're going to go down to like hormones and neurotransmitters, like what is happening inside when that threat is perceived or seen. So there's something called the HPA axis. It stands for like hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenal glands. Those kind of like cascade work together and the result is cortisol. Cortisol is this hormone that increases blood sugar. So it's pulling uh, glycogen from the liver to put glucose in the blood system so that you've got energy for muscles to go do what they need to do. Um, it also can increase blood pressure. So we, again, we're getting blood flowing because we got to run away. Um, and then it slows the function of those non-essentials so that in the moment of increased high stress, we don't need to worry about digesting our food or fighting off the cold. We need to run. Um, what's interesting is it also communicates with parts of the brain that control our mood, our motivations, fear, and our behaviors. Um, I'm going to touch on adrenaline, norepinephrine just quickly. So those things also happen when a, a stressor hits. So increase heart rate, increase respiration, you're breathing faster, we're slowing digestion down. And norepinephrine, increased alertness, attention, like you heard the moose rumbling, you're ready. So if we go back to thinking of cortisol and you think about whatever situation you want to make up, the moose in the woods, the lion in prehistoric times, cavemen, like cortisol makes a lot of sense. Like we need energy in the muscle because we got to get ready to run or, or fight. And you need blood pumping to do that. So high blood pressure. And then your mood is going to be like, don't talk to me right now. Like I, something is coming to get me. I, I don't have time for you. Don't talk to me. Um, your motivation is only going to be on that threat. So it's going to be hard to be motivated to do something else. Like if the, if the lion or the moose or whatever's coming at me, I'm not motivated to like thinking of silly examples, clean my room or like meal plan. No, um, it's going to be on, you're going to be motivated towards what is going to make you feel safe in that moment. And then your behavior and fear will come accordingly. The thing about 
the state we live in of there's a lot of eights in the chat um is this constant like increased blood sugar increased blood pressure like anxiety heart rate respiration all that it can put us at higher risk for chronic disease states like like hypertension diabetes um and maybe even like irritable bowel syndrome with that enteric gut note from before so that's what's happening in like the hormone level neurotransmitters and here's how it might look in your body so those people that i see in the clinic they're like ah, i'm not really like when i ask them how their stress level is and they say i don't know not it's not that bad but our conversation so far has led me to that question because they're complaining about poor sleep or like their neck and back is hurting. Um, or they just have headaches every day or like constipation, diarrhea, back and forth. Could be irritable with family, um, appetite changes. So some people, when they're stressed, they want to eat more. And other people, when they're stressed, they're like, have no appetite. Um, so these are just like, and they can kind of feed on each other. So let's say you get stressed. Mm, I'm kind of jump into the next slide, but say you feel stressed and you don't sleep well. Well, then the next day, because you didn't sleep well, you're craving more carbohydrates. So you're eating more. So then you're like, what the heck? And you're mad at yourself for eating carbs. Guess what? More stress. And then we just keep tacking it on and circling around and around. Um, so I'd love to know just how, how you think you feel and experience stress in your body. Um, for me, it can, it's poor sleep, but um, you know what's weird about us? Our disconnect from brain to body. I know that I'm nervous or anxious or stressed about something. Like, we're re weird. Like, I'm just like, oh, I can't get a good breath. Like for days, I'm like, ah, I just don't feel like I can like, I gotta breathe it all in. It takes that happening sometimes for me to be like, oh, wonder what's bothering me. And that, that's just weird to me. Like that's how disconnected I can be, how disconnected we can get. So if you feel like chatting, how do you experience stress? How do you think you experience stress? Mm -hmm. Jeannie, I think I was just going to add too for myself. I think a lot of times I notice it in my body. Like I'll notice it in my shoulders or my back for whatever reason. It's just like, that's where I tend to hold, hold um, mm -hmm. stress yeah. or yeah. Um, maybe also the GI issues. Like maybe my stomach feels upset or like you said, you know, it's kind of like, sometimes it's almost like you don't, it's not necessarily that something is top and foremost. Like, it's not like, you had a major life crisis, but you feel in your body, you feel like this over, like a little bit of overwhelm of just like, oh, I need to take a deep breath or I need to relax. And what is causing this? Like kind of makes you question. It's kind of backwards. Like you would think I would start thinking about whatever I'm anxious about. And then I would be like, oh, I can't breathe. But instead it's like, I can't breathe. And then I'm triggered to like, oh, I wonder what's bugging, bugging me. Yeah. I love these. Uh, neck butterflies and stomach tight feeling uh all of the above um emotional eating get really quiet yeah snappy um an eye twitch i got a story about an eye twitch um yeah these are great thank you guys stomach cramps went to munch oh yeah um so i took this slide and kind of my own impressions from my experience of like what, how this might look after weight loss surgery. Um, so if we have poor sleep, we're at risk for, for weight regain. Um, if we have depression, we have less drive and desire. So if you're feeling depressed, you're going to be a lot less motivated to like work on your eating or start an exercise plan or continue whatever it is you're doing. Cause you just don't, you just don't have that drive um gi issues so you could have more bloating constipation diarrhea new food intolerances um 
which I would say increases stress because you're thinking like, what the heck, what's wrong with my pouch? What did I do? What did I eat wrong? Um, it could be nothing. It could be stress. Uh, difficulty concentrating. So that would make it like, let's say you, you're ready to make some changes or you're like, oh, I just really need to get back on track. And so you, you're like, okay, I'm going to plan my meals. I'm going to start an exercise plan. And then two days later, you're like, I, where's that? Where's those notes I took? Like you can't concentrate on it because that stress level is, is going. Headaches, um, appetite changes. And what's interesting about cortisol is it increases not just the desire to eat, but increases the desire for more palatable foods. So your higher sugar, higher salt, higher fat foods, um, irritability, neck pain, anxiety, all those things. Yeah. I'm going to pop. Anybody have any comments, questions before we kind of sh shift a little bit? One thing you said, Jeannie, too, I guess that I just want to add to that. I know your statistics showed like the numbers of 40 to 50, like 50 percent of people. I feel like everybody at some point has some form of stress in their life. Maybe they're some, some people are just not being honest. It's and maybe what you what your definition of stress is, because stress is not only the good things. I mean, the bad things that happen in our yeah. life, but it can be good things, too, mm -hmm. you know, like if there's a, like, there's a wedding in my family this weekend and, you know, people are getting ready and even those good things can cause you, it's, I wonder how would you define stress? How would you define that as? Myself? Yeah. I think it is. Ooh, added pressure. I'm, I'm, this is in the moment I'm defining this. Um, because if you think like, that's the first part, it's added pressure. So that could be like wedding, like that's exciting. Like we were talking before we started, I'm moving in a few, in like six weeks. I'm really excited about it, but there's a crap ton of stuff I got to do. There's more pressure. Um, and then I think, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that because even that added pressure could be unconscious. Like you might not be aware of the fact that you're adding pressure on yourself or that you're like rehashing old stuff that's adding pressure. So, and that could go good or bad. So today that's my definition. It could change. In a couple that was weeks. a great, it was a great definition. <laughs> good question. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, but, you know, too, I want to say too, I think sometimes like staying comfortable in our life becomes, to, it gets to the point where it's, it's comfortable until it becomes uncomfortable. And so Stress yeah. is what causes us to grow. And I think if we never grow, what would our life look like? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like you almost need a little bit of, yeah, of change in our life. So yeah, it's great. Great. Yeah. You can't grow without stress or without, well, you can't ch grow without change and change is going to be stressful a little bit. Some, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, but it's how you handle it. So if I know I'm stressed and we'll get to this, like, or that this is going to cause stress, I can have something to help produce, like lower that sympathetic fight, fight, freeze. And so that I can actually focus on like being calm and going through with the, the pressure. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Unless I'm. Ooh. And some of these, Jeannie, if you want to read out loud, because yeah. our replay listeners from our oh, podcast. Yeah. Good idea. Some of them may not see some of these and these are great. You guys are great at, at having some great comments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. The exciting things that add to our usual stress are realized go away. Ooh, this was good. Shauna, um, like planning for a vacation, like you, you're stressed, you're pl like planning for a wedding move, but then that goes away. But the other stress is harder. Like it, it's, it's, a, it's that negative feedback. And so it keeps, going and it's hard it doesn't have the automatic shut off like other things do yeah um there's this girl on instagram says she had weight loss surgery because her doctor thought that she had higher than normal cortisol levels from training for her first marathon oh that's that's a lot in there yes exercise can increase stress hormones the thing about cortisol and when i was talking about it makes sense in a, in a 
temporary stress in that like real um, actual stress. We need it. We need it to respond. What's the, our problem is a lot of us are in this like constant level of stress. And so the cortisol level is higher and we don't respond to it enough. So then it's higher. It's like building up and, and like a negative feedback, but there's a lot of, there's other things that go on with marathon training. I'm thinking like a friend of my running buddy just did Boston and she's complaining all the time. Like, Oh, I'm still eating. Like I'm training. Um, so there's a lot that could be going on in that question. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. You guys are like, no pun intended, feeding me right into what we're going to get into. Um, so here's the you part. So what's going on in your brain and what can you do about it? So we, we know stress is happening, how we experience it, but like, what the heck are we supposed to do? So our brains are plastic, meaning like flexible and changeable. Um, so there's neuroplasticity. It's the brain's ability to change or adapt, um, or recognize itself or reorganize yeah, itself by forming new connections throughout our lives. Um, then there's habits. So that forms in the brain from repeated action and that strengthens that connection between neurons, um, in your brain so that then we get an automatic response. So our brain super smart and it wants to be super efficient. So if it, if it notices like, oh, we do A and then B happens, A and then B happens, let's just connect that. Let's just make A, B. Um, so those strong connections make it easier for you to like do other things or think about other things because that's happening automatically. Um, so good examples are like uh, brushing your teeth before bed. Like my son is eight. I have to say it over and over again. It's just brush your teeth, brush your teeth. But I'm 44. Like I can't go to bed without brushing my teeth. Like it's a, my brain. It's a habit. Do it. Um, or maybe like even little things like the way I get out of the car and I grab these things. Like I used to have to think, okay, I need this, I need that, I need this. Now it just happens. So my brain is busy thinking and doing other things. So it's cool like that this happens because we become more efficient and can do and think about other things. And we can change things and build new automatic responses. I also love this because it takes away some of the blame and shame and should have like it's really hard to tell to like like we were talking your body on stress after weight loss surgery like it's really hard to meal plan and follow through with it and do it every day when you're super stressed or when you have a strong wire or connection that's been built that says like walk in work go to starbucks walk into work go to starbucks like that is a strong deep wire or think about it like well I'll go back to the hiking thing like a trail that has been hiked by everybody all the time and it is very clear and deep and easy to follow so if that's been built in your brain but you're trying to go a different way it's going to be hard it doesn't mean you're weak or or shame or to be ashamed of it's just like okay you're building a new path and that's going to take a little bit of time and work um Yeah, I'm just reading through. You guys are fun comments. Okay. So. Oh, I used some of these already. Building a new trail. Yeah. So where I heard this example was actually more about cow pastures and how, you know, if, if you look like on a hillside of a cow pasture, you'll see like a little line and it's the way the cows go down to the barn. And they just because that's the way they walked. So that's the way they continue to walk. But they could make a new path. So the trail, I like that better. I like hiking. Um <laughs> Mimi, I want to say something here too. Yeah. I know like my traveling and stuff for me. And I know I was talking to a friend this last weekend who's a travel expert. And we were talking about going places and doing things. And when you're going a new place, sometimes it's kind of scary. 
Yeah. And it's almost like having a little support or friends or someone to meet you on the other side can be helpful because I know, but after you do it once or twice, it's all, it's so much more comfortable. It's just kind of like parking. We were talking about parking too. You know, you get to the point where you park in the same exact place. And I can remember um, a few years back, I started, I changed the place that I was parking at the airport and it kind of like freaked me out a little bit. I don't know, like just yeah. one simple little move. Yeah. And it's like, it was nothing. And now I'm like very comfortable with that new move, but it's like the, the smallest little things. Yeah. And would you say like crying? I know I heard of uh, someone had recently said that for their, I think it was their 60th birthday. They were trying 60 new things this year. Yeah. Maybe like just building brand new little, like small little pathways mm -hmm. that helps open us up to new, newer things. Yeah. And I think recognizing that there is that deep pathway or trail takes off some of that pressure, reduces your stress a little bit so that you can identify like a new parking space, a new, a new path, a new connection to make. Yeah. Um, some other examples is like, let's say, uh, my dietetic internship was dang stressful. And after I got home from the hospital every day, I poured myself a glass of wine over time. I'm going to think stress, drink wine, or like, let's say you, you eat whatever when you're stressed over time, your brain's going to form a link stress eat. So that is unconscious. Like you're not thinking same way with my like weird breathing when I'm anxious, like you're not thinking, oh, I'm so stressed. Let me go pour a glass of wine or I'm so stressed. Let me go open a bag of chips. That's not a conscious thought. It's just a efficient connection made in your brain. So, oh, we feel this way. We do this thing. Um, So it's like an, an automatic reaction whenever that trigger happens. Um, another example might be like biting your nails when you're nervous, like biting nails doesn't do anything physically, mentally to calm my nerve. You know, it doesn't make sense that it calms my nerves, but done it. So now that might happen before I actually recognize that I'm nervous, you know? Um, yeah. Dini, are you going to get in how to change this? Because I know there's a question and I think that's. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how do you stop? Stop that. Do you have to recognize it that you're doing yeah. it first? So um I think I'm like a couple slides away from that. Let me just check. Uh there's just some other examples like when you are high stress, it's hard to make decisions, hard to concentrate, remember things. So it sounds like negative, but what I want you to take from this is like have that attitude of like, well, no wonder. Like, no wonder I'm eating Doritos every night or a popcorn every night. Like I can't. I'm stressed out after work and I can't remember the plans I made and it's just an automatic connection that's been made. And so that's what's happening. That's your first step is like, recognize it, take the pressure off that your, your brain is just doing what it's built to do. Um, so also like how difficult must it be to make lasting nutrition changes in that environment? Like, with all this stress and all the things happening in your brain, all those automatic connections, like how would you expect yourself to just go eat this meal plan tomorrow? Like there's a lot of other things going on that we have to also work on as we make diet and nutrition changes. So what can you do? So you want to decrease the body stress response, to diminish that sympathetic nervous response and that overflow of cortisol and increase that rest and digest system. But we can't like go out and change the world just the way we want it to be or ignore the email or make traffic disappear. Like we can't get rid of those stressors out there. Um, so what can we do? <clears throat> this is one of lots of tools that I talk about with clients, but it's, it's so easy to teach and apply and it is effective. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, you can connect to yourself and make sure you're really taking care of you. Um, so what I would love to do is actually like do this with you right now. Make sure you just like, 
get in a comfortable position. There's also something about how our body's stance tells our emotions what to be. Like if I'm sitting like chin up, shoulders back, like, oh, my brain's like, oh, we're, we're feeling good. We are safe. We are confident. If I'm sitting like this, like, oh, I'm worried. I'm scared. So I want everybody to shoulders back, take a deep breath and really like connect in to yourself. And when you're ready, I want you to ask yourself like, how do I feel? And pause. Don't think it out. Don't analyze it. Just pause. Like, okay, how do I feel right now in this moment? And I'm going to be quiet to let you do that. If there are a jumble of words coming up, usually there will be one that's kind of louder, bigger, repeating. That's going to be your word, your how do I feel answer. Okay. Awesome. So we got one answer. I feel tired. I feel relaxed. So the next thing you got to ask in the same way, we are going to like connect. You're asking yourself, you're asking your, your emotions. What do I need? Pause and wait for the answer. And once you have those answers, if you'll type them both in the chat, that would be awesome. So like Heidi might say like, oh, I feel relaxed. What do I need to stay in that for a while, to enjoy that? Or um, Emily might say like, or Mary, like, I feel tired. What do I need? I take a nap. Yeah. Uh, how do I feel? I feel mentally exhausted. What do I need? I need a break. What do I need? More self-love, more me time. So what I want this, the results to not be more shooting, but like, oh, I just need to take a nap and that's okay. That's what I need for this, the way I'm feeling right now. Not like, okay, nope, can't take a nap. I'm going to do these things or I can't rest or I can't take a break. Um, what this does is it connects you, your emotions, your feelings, your needs to your brain to take action and it stops that automated response. So if I'm sitting at my computer at four o'clock and I'm so tired of writing notes and I'm like, oh, what's in the kitchen? Like what's in my desk drawer? Oh, I know somebody brought cake. Like I'm just going to go eat that. That's what's going to happen. I'm going to go to the candy drawer and then I'm probably going to go back to the candy drawer. But if in that moment I was like, okay, how do I feel? I feel so tired of writing notes and overwhelmed. Okay, what do I need? I just need to go outside. I'm going to be gone for like three minutes. I'll get some fresh air. Okay, then go do that thing. So it's just a little break and it actually connects you with what you need. So let's say it is 930 and you're going to the popcorn. If you can stop for that moment, be like, okay, how do I feel? I feel really irritated with my husband right now, what do I need? I need to talk to him or I need to figure out what's bothering me or it. So in that you were about to get the popcorn, but now we got a totally different plan and we have stopped that cycle. Yeah. I feel satisfied. So what do I need? I don't need just now. Cause it's just three. Yeah. Ooh, Stacy, I like yours. I feel distant. I need to breathe more. And so there are these are very specific cool words. So feel like I want I don't want it to be an emotion. I feel tired, angry, sad, uh, worried, um, guilty, you know, overwhelmed, tired. Like, and what do I need? Like that's gonna be more action. Yeah. Cool. Any, um, love to know what you learned from that little practice as well. <laughs> so 
so it's so incredible. I think this exercise, Jeannie, teaches one to trust yourself, like to really trust what you're hearing, kind of like that very first slide that you had up that said, trust your gut instinct, you know, trust what your body's telling you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause we're so, there's too many automated things going on. Like we're automated in those, those connections that have been built in your brain that make the automatic habits. And then we're automated in like to-do lists and not even stopping to evaluate it. But what's cool is you don't have to evaluate and judge. You just have to check in like, okay, how do I feel? I feel sad. What do I need? I need to call my mom. Like I wouldn't have, that wouldn't have come up if I hadn't asked those questions. What would have happened is I ate the brownies or cycled in that, trying to ignore it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a really cool tool. The hard part is just remembering to use it. So it's awesome to do like, if there is an event that you know is hard or stressful, do it then. Or if there's a meal that is challenging or a time of day that's challenging, put this on your schedule. Um, sorry if you can hear background noise. My family just got home. (laughs) I have thought Shauna, I'm trying to think of a way she says, maybe I should get this tattooed on my arm. Um, to make a little reminder that might be not be obvious to everyone else, but like to you, like a little magnet for the fridge or something, um, or like a keychain, something. I'll let you know when I get it. Okay. So here's, here's what we talked about. A lot of us are stressed and feeling it. It impacts us physically in lots of different ways, but it's, it's not a fault. It's our brains being super efficient and they've built connections that allow us to respond automatically to stress. How to undo that is actually recognize how you're feeling. Take that moment to pause that automated reaction and ask, how do I feel? What do I need? The, and I put pause in all caps because that's really key. If you just like, how do I feel? Well, I feel stressed and I feel max. I have to do this and no one's helping me. And now work is calling. That's not it. That's like cycling and just adding to your stress. What you want to say is, how do I feel? No, oh, I feel proud. What do I need to recognize that? Like, we, we just don't do that enough. So, If we go back to that first question, knowing what we know now, when you don't like the number on the scale, what are your first thoughts and actions? So I think my first reaction would be like, okay, how do I feel? I'm kind of disappointed. What do I need? Hmm. I need to take note of all the good things I've been doing to help my, my weight and my body. And then I'll do something and then I'll do the next action. Yeah. And that, I mean, oh. this. Might, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say a little hope, a little yeah. faith yeah. in yourself. You know, yeah. sometimes those things can bring up those emotions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm focus on me and self-care. Yeah. 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 Awesome. So it's funny as a dietitian that I spend an hour talking about neuroplasticity in the brain and emotions, but after 20 years of working in bariatrics and seeing the frustration that people have with weight regain, um, and, wondering why that was happening when I found this, this emotional element and this stress management, it made so much sense and it actually helps nutrition work. So what I do with clients is I call it the meals plan. So it stands for make eating easy with less stress. But what it is, is like a combination of, okay, we're doing nutrition coaching. We're talking about what you're eating and why, but we're also under that looking at 
all the different stressors in life and what are your triggers and how can we make new trails to support those nutrition changes that you're making. So it, again, it sounds funny that I'm, I'm talking about emotions and the brain, but it really supports nutrition change and helps it actually work. So this is what I do with clients. And if you are curious or want to know more, you can just email me, um, genie at genieboyer.com. I'm going to start reading some of the chats. Um, Ooh. Jeannie, while you're doing that, I'm also going to put your contact information okay. here okay. so that they can get a hold of you and we can show them to your website. And what kind of services do you offer? So um, the meals plan is um, eight weeks of one-on-one -on -one with me where we work on these stress management skills. So we just talked about one and there's five big ones. Um, so I give you those skills and we practice them together as we're doing some of the nutrition work. So primarily that's what I do right now. So one-on-one, -on -one, um, eight week programs. Yeah. Make eating easy with less stress. Um, and you can also find me on Barry nation and at bariatric retreat in November, which sounds so far away, but it's, it's gonna be soon. Um, Oh, I want to go back and read when I, when I want to still eat, when I even when I'm so full that I'm hurting, so full that I'm hurting, what do I feel full? What do I need? Take a walk. Yeah. I mean, what's crazy is it sounds so simple and like obvious, but it's such a like a, like a you feel this little glow, this little like, oh yeah. And it's like you're motivated to do that thing. Um well, it makes sense because you know, so many people know what they're supposed to do. I mean, let's like when, when somebody comes in to see you, it may be that they already kind of know nutritionally all of those things, oh, yeah. but then it's like, why aren't they able to do it? Well, it's because those neural pathways have been built and they're yeah. trained, they train themselves in different ways. And that's why I think sometimes after bariatric surgery, we forget that, you know, your physiology, your body changes the physical part. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if you've, if you've developed a lot of habits over time and you've trained your mind in a certain way, it's about looking at that. So yeah. that makes total sense. That's. Yeah. And if we think about the trails, oh, I hope my computer doesn't die. I just saw that the battery's like this. Um, <laughs> if we think about those trails, it's like, here's this old pathway that you had before surgery. And after surgery, you develop this new one, but this one's deeper. And so if you fall back in there, it might, you know, you might have to work a little harder to get back on this other path, but it's still there. You still can. Yeah. Absolutely. So Jeannie, what kind of results have people seen that have um, worked with you, with your oh, services? That's a great question. Um, there are a lot more uh, feeling related. So just feeling like so much more peace and like empowered that they have the tools they need for whenever down the future. Um, so instead of being like, oh, I lost 20 pounds, which I've had clients lose 20 pounds. Um, what's more is I have people say like, oh, I just feel better. And I feel like I have got this, like I've got control and I know what I need. Um, so that's kind of the ultimate goal when I work with somebody is that when we're done that they're like, um, I'll call you when I need you because we've done the work that sets them up for long-term success. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to actually pop on to your website real quickly. Jeannie, is that okay? You can. It's It hasn't been updated in a while. Um, so I spend a lot more time on Instagram. Uh, so if you guys want to. I can pull up that too. Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm, we're going to, I am going to stop my video while I go get my charger. Okay. So while you're doing that, I'll share my screen. Okay. So guys, I am going to pop onto Jeannie's Instagram page first. It is, oh, I had her videos up a while ago. So, so here we go. It's Barry success, success RD underscore Jeannie Boyer. <clears throat> and um, she's always posting like little, little hints and different things on there. So feel free to check that out. 
Um, in addition, and there's the message button if you decide to be a oh, friend yeah. with Jeannie, you can message her. And then on her website, I'll pop over to that too as well. Oh, yeah. I didn't so, think you can, um, when you get on there, a pop up should pop up and you can join my email list. For the summer, the subscribers decided to just do recipes. So every week I will post on the email chain just a new fun summer recipe. Oh, fun. I wonder, would it be right here at the bottom? Join the list also? Yeah, you can do that too. Okay, so right there, guys. Um, and there is the tab where you have programs. Mm -hmm. Is your meals program on there? It is not. <laughs> but um, So message Jeannie for that one. Right. Okay. So the bariatric uh, refresh is more of a, a course. Like if you were like, I don't have time for one-on-one, -on -one, but I just need a little refresher. Um, that's what it, it is. It's a never expiring online course to kind of get you back on track and feel really supported. Um, the berry retainer is more of like, I just want a dietitian in my back pocket. And so there'll be like a low monthly fee to kind of call me when you need me get some extra email support, um, visit once a month, that kind of thing. And your website is www.bariatricsuccessrd.com. Yes. Uh, if you're listening on a replay, you can find this in our description. And Jeannie, I know that you're also, Jeannie's also an affiliate of ProCare, who is our sponsor. So mm -hmm. we want to say thank you for ProCare for being our sponsor. And I'm going to post, um, I'm going to actually, Jeannie, what is some of your favorite products of ProCare? Oh, I just love the multivitamin with iron. Like every patient that comes in that's complaining about chewables and wafers, I'm like, this is what you need. Take it. And then we can tackle calcium. But that, I love that. One. And the little scent heart thing. I want to forget what that's called. Sensor? Yeah. Because that's the worst thing about a vitamin is opening the bottle and being like, Ooh, um, but that takes care of it. Yeah. So I am going to pull up the ProCare website. It's www.procarenow.com. And we'll go to that. I am going to go there first so that my screen is adjusted. Um, here we go. So www.pocarenow.com and under the products, Jeannie, you said your favorite was on the bariatric multis was just the, the, the 45 swallowing. iron. Um, yeah, multivitamin with 45 milligrams of iron. That's once a day. Okay. Oh, and the fact, sorry, oh, prenatal. Like I don't have a lot of prenatal patients lately, but it's so great that that exists. <laughs> there's and I, as far as i know we're current pro care is the only company with the, the prenatal mm -hmm. so that is awesome and when you when you click there's a bariatric multi in the capsule and the two the one that Jeannie's talking about is with 45 any of these options there's going to be a pop-up here on this side too um when you click onto these you should have the option um to have the 18 versus actually probably have to look down and some of these 18 um, versus 45 versus iron free. So there is different variations. Here's a 45, there's the 18, and then there is an iron free as well. You click on one of them again, because I saw something I want to point out. Um, if you have the finances to buy 365 at once, do that so that when you run out, in a month, you don't forget. Like I have so many people like, oh, I was taking them good. And then I, and then I ran out and haven't ordered them again. Either do auto ship or get 365. So I know you're covered for a year. Yes. And we just recently added this 365. So guys, if you do the subscribe and save, which would be, you could do it every 12 months, you actually save so wow. much money, like 18.52%. It's only $109. So that's less than $10 a month for bariatric and vitamins. Vitamins plus insurance because it's there. You're going to take it. 100%, Jeannie, you are so right. And then the other product you said was the Sensorts. What I like to do with the Sensorts is up at the search box, just type in Sensort. It's Scent, S-C-E-N-T, Cert. And you'll have like a little pop-up. 
Those do come if you order one of the, either the auto ship or um, I think it's the auto ship. If you do with the auto ship, you get a free sensor, but you can also order one. They last two years for one sensor. So you could actually use it in multiple different bottles. And it's not only useful for products that are like multivitamins, but also you could use it in like maybe your blood pressure medicine or other things too. And what it does is it makes, it doesn't affect the flavor, but it affects how you sense the flavor because with your olfactory nerve being stimulated, it gives you the sensation that you're tasting something in citrus grow or peppermint or vanilla. So just a fun little, little yeah. thing. I'm also going to pop on too. Jeannie was talking about our partner program, which is very connected. Her and I are both on there. And I'm going to go under the ProCare Health website under Berry Connected. There's a little tab that says partner programs. Berry Nation is listed under there. And check that out. We actually have a contract with them where um, patients that subscribe to that are actually um, given a different value. So you can do um, a four week trial of it and you get a major savings. We also have a 90 day savings bundle with that as well. Now, Jeannie's, her information, I'm going to post um, in the chat box for her affiliate. You'll save 10% if you're using Jeannie's, Jeannie's code. Um, and I'm not sure if you can use Berry Nation and Jeannie, but yep. try either one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen and I'm going to post that in the chat box. So Jeannie's um, discount code is Barry Success, B-A-R-I-S-U-C-C-E-S-S. -S. It is not case sensitive, meaning you can put all caps or lowercase. And when you get in at the checkout, all you do is there's a box where you can place a code and when you do that, it takes 10% off your order. <laughs> so, so I think that's- Do that, yeah. get the year supply. You're even saving, you're saving not 18%, but probably 28%. So yeah, <laughs> that's pretty incredible. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 45. So 45 milligrams of iron a day is like ASMBS like recommendation. Um, but some people are getting it from other sources. So it might do the 18 milligram. Um, but a lot of women need a little more. So I like the 45. Yeah. Awesome. For sure. And I think iron is one of the biggest kind of risk factors after bariatric surgery. Iron deficiency anemia is one is one of them. So yeah. And great thank suggestion. you all for all of your um, chat, just interactions on the chat. That's awesome. Thank you. So helpful. Everybody's been very interactive. I love this group. So <laughs> Jeannie, thank you. This was an incredible topic. I loved it. It yeah. makes you just realize how much you can control the yeah. stressors in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It was, yes. it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. And um, any, any pointers just as closing? Oh, um, it's, it took me a long time personally to like grasp this, like connect to yourself. Like, I'm like, what, what the hell? Like, how do, how do I do that? Here I am. But after a couple of years of doing this, um, that is my big pointer is like, Hey, take, you're trying to take care of you. You're trying to do the best you can for yourself. That requires a little connection that you are entitled to connect with yourself. So if you need to be like, I'm taking a break and you just close your eyes and sit there that it sounds like little and tiny, but it has a huge impact. So connect with yourself. Mm -hmm. Connect with yourself. It's today. See how, yeah. much, how much difference it makes today. Yeah. Yeah. And let me know. Yeah. Tell me on yeah. Instagram. Send Jeannie a message. Let me know. Let me know too. So yeah. Jeannie, um, thank you so much. We'll have to have you back at some point. And I look forward to seeing you at the Bar the Bariatric Society retreat. If anybody's wanting to join that, look up um, on Instagram. I think that's their best place to look mm -hmm. is the Bariatric Society. And they have an event coming up this fall. And which Jeannie will it, be there's discounts um, with probably with ProCare, but also with me. So if, if you're going to sign up, 
let us know first so we can give you the discount code. So do you have, do you know what your- I think it's just my name. I think it's just Jeannie. I need to go. Okay. Okay. And if, if, if you have problems with that, you can always reach out to Jeannie too. So, yeah. okay. Thanks everybody. And Thanks. take care. Have an amazing, incredible day and weekend. A lot less stress-free. Yeah. Stress-free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank right. you. Bye everybody. Bye.